And now I welcome Mark Middleton with a message for the children. Welcome back to another Time with Children lesson. You're going to be seeing a theme throughout this Lenten season. For Valentine's Day, we talked about the love of God from a math perspective, always fun and exciting. Last week, we talked about the meaning of the number 40 for the Lenten season. It's representation of this Lenten journey we're going on right now. This week, we're going to talk about the number three. Today's scripture reading talks about a conversation Jesus had with the two criminals while they were hanging on the cross. The story shows that three people were talking with each other, while one of those three are the part of the Trinity, which represents God as three persons in one. So it made sense to me to focus on the number three today. The number three appears in the Bible 467 times. Now that's a lot, I know. The Hebrew meaning of the number three, which is shalosh or selashah, which means harmony, new life, and complete, a lesser form of completion compared to what the number seven represents. It can be used to describe the intensity of something. So in, it made sense to me, if you think of the hymn we sing, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, it represents that intensity of, of our Lord's holiness. So here are some of the ways that the number three is significant within the Bible. God often says something three times or a phrase gets repeated three times, again, for that emphasis, that intensity. One One of the stories we typically focus on in this Lenten season is Jesus praying at the Garden of Gethsemane. Well, Jesus prays at that garden three separate times. In a conversation between Jesus and Peter, Jesus asked Peter three different things. He asked Peter to feed my lambs, to tend my sheep, and to feed my sheep. All of this because Peter would be known as the rock, which is the interpretation of Peter's Greek name, of the church foundation in the book of Acts. Later on in the story, after Jesus was arrested, Peter denies knowing Jesus three separate times, which leads to three different instances of forgiveness which represents Peter thinking deeper into his life as an evangelist, as somebody who spreads the word of God when Jesus returns to heaven. And one of the more obvious instances, to me at least, happens during the Lenten season when Jesus is raised from the dead three days after he was crucified. So we talked about the history of the number three, as well as what it means in the Bible, but what does it mean for us? Well, unless you're a NASCAR fan, the number three represents completeness and intensity. If you're a NASCAR fan, it represents the intimidator. I think you can say that today's story is full of intense moments. Jesus goes through this pretty intense journey to get to this point between a lot of torture, beatings, whippings, verbal assaults, and more. And it's so unfathomable, so unbelievable for one person to go through, even if this person was the Son of God, but we learn along the way that this was the plan of completeness. Jesus was going through all this as a way to complete the act of saving us from our sin. It was a way to complete our journey to gain eternal life with God. So I pray that as we go through this Lenten season together, that we will see the completeness that Jesus portrays. So I challenge you this week to do a kind act or give a kind word three separate times this week. Or if you're going to talk to one person, compliment them three times within a week. So, and see, see how you feel about that. See if you get this sense of, again, harmony, new life, completeness. And maybe kind of a stretch there, but you and God can work that out. So the number three represents completeness and harmony. May your Lenten journey be harmonious with your relationship with Jesus. And next week, we're going to focus on the number two. So I will see you then. Have a good week.